Impaling the Sultan is easily the coolest mission in EU4. Today, I'm going to show you a lesser known mission tree in playthrough that's easily one of my favourites in the game and lets you snowball really, really quickly. Did you know there's a monument in Ulm? On our 100,000 subscriber special trip to Ulm, Tom and I are going to host an EU4 Mythbusters episode to see if it really does give you yearly prestige. If you like this sort of content and you want to fly out to Ulm earlier, why not subscribe? I'm going to show you something really cool. So there are two countries that can do this. There's either Wallachia or there's Moldavia. I think Moldavia is better because it has a coastline. <laughs> it's literally it. Also has a little bit more flavor in the beginning that gives you potentially a really good ruler, which might be better than Vlad. But for pure roleplay, Vlad's better. Now, this is going to be perhaps one of the fastest starts in the game. So brace yourself. If we're lucky, Byzantium won't get any allies. I think we're lucky. Right. Stage one, no CB, the Byzantines. Gonna trigger this as well. I don't think I need an advisor given that I outnumber them so significantly. And I have a five shot general, which also helps. And there's a stack wipe. Right, time to just siege him down. And in the meantime, let's cancel military access. Oh, we can't. They've got enemies within their borders. Okay, cancel military access now, so they can't march over here. All right, building an anti-Ottoman coalition, very important. <laughs> uh, it's cute that this guy thinks he's sticking around. No, we have a, an event. Roman's gonna invade at some point, and we're gonna take that ruler. Right, two events in one. That's a great event, and we want to crush this pretender ourselves. Now, let's have a look. Is he any good? He is a 244. That's better than what we currently have, so we're going to let him take control of our nation. To be fair, 0 5 sh shock leader is almost worth keeping, but no. Excellent. They will peace out. Uh, the important thing is to note who they're at war with. So, right now, they're at war with Epirus. So, we're going to be fighting Epirus immediately. All right, we take our vassal and we fight Epirus. <laughs> All right, and of course, hand this stuff off to the Byzantines. That's what I'm going to do. I mean, he's actually kind of close to loyal. We could probably make him loyal. And there we go. We have a 244. This will change. Like, sometimes it'll be insane. Sometimes it won't be. So be wary of that. Now, because of this Order of the Dragon stuff, if we can get one ally that's rival to the Ottomans, we've got a decent shot. Getting that ally is kind of tricky right now. But that's why I prefer Moldavia. If I was in Wallachia in this case, I'd be stuck because there's nothing I can do apart from wait. Moldavia can hop across the Caucasus, which, as you can see, I'm kind of planning on doing. All right, we are fighting both Serbia and Wallachia. It's got a two-star general, a 3-3 three, three versus our 2-2. Two, two. Uh. <laughs> Wallachia, man. I appreciate you throwing for the video, but this is a bit much. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, we've got really unlucky this game. Honestly, I think... <laughs> If you're facing this game right now, I, I would restart if I were you. This is this is a, a terrible, terrible game, but I'm going to see what happens with it. We got off to a decent start with vassalizing the Byzantines and got a bit lucky with Epirus, so I can't have everything. Moldavia is threatened by Aragon. Uh, I, I don't know about that one. I'm feeling pretty confident about my Aragonese uh, flank. I don't think they're going to be doing too much. I will say this, boys. In times of war, it is crucial that you s spread out and raid everything for what it's worth. It's the only reason I'm making any sort of money right now. Right, and that's sort of your starting moves done. Uh, we get to do this, which is nice. We've united the Voivodes. I'm so sorry about that pronunciation. Let's see if we pick up Hungary as an ally. We are close. Maybe an advisor? Oh, we have one. Sweet. We can even rival the Ottomans. I don't know why it doesn't count. We have to be allied to a rival. We can't just rival them ourselves, which sucks. But in less than 10 years, we're looking pretty good. Remember, we start guaranteed by the Polish, which is also quite good in case of attack from the Ottomans. Right, I reckon we royal marry the Hungarians just to get us over the edge. And... Get me that alliance. Thank you. Which means we can do the Order of the Dragon. Which gives us another diplomatic reputation, which can be very useful, and more improved relations. As well as a bunch of claims, which is cool. But this is the mission I really want to trigger. It's easily one of the coolest in the game. Poland has turned hostile. That's less good. <laughs> it's still guaranteeing us. See, the key part about taking Byzantium early, obviously we get a vassal that has cause, which is great, but it means that the Ottomans aren't, a, aren't an empire, which is kind of crucial. If you ever want to new to the Ottomans, be sure to no CB Byzantium day one because it locks them out of the mission tree. They can't expand as quickly as they'd like to, and it just sort of ruins their day, which is quite fun. <laughs> Roman, could you get a kid, please? I really, really don't want to be under Hungary in a personal union. A 342? I mean, look, I'll take it. Novgorod has offered us an alliance. That is perhaps one of the roguest things I've seen. Uh, 
No. <laughs> I could get Muscovy though. All right, sure. Wait, your rival's Poland. Ooh. Oh, he's no longer hostile. It's because his person, his ruler personality changed. Okay, sweet. We could get the Polish. Is that better than the Muscovites? Okay, I'm gonna do this, which might seem a little dumb, but we need some allies. So I'm gonna go a bit over our force limit and see if we can get Aragon, Austria, Poland, and Hungary. Because that's a coalition against the Ottomans, if ever I've seen one. Okay, we can get the Poles. That's good. Can we get Austria? Minus nine. And what about the Aragonese? Minus eight. Okay, if we can get them both, that would be really useful. At least two countries. We can get another plus one diplomatic reputation if we do this. At least two countries have an alliance and at least 150 opinion. What do you want? Not 150. What do you want? Nowhere near 150. Yeah, I've got like another 20 years. If I get two allies, get them to 150 relations, it gives me another plus one, which means I get Austria and Aragon. Alternatively, I could do something like this. They're both just friendly now. Okay. I think the Austrians are better because Hungary is rival to both Poland and Aragon. There's no way I keep that alliance. So we'll do that. Now, another key thing to consider is the Mamluks in this equation. If the Mamluks attack the Ottomans, or they attack an ally of the Ottomans, so sometimes they declare war for uh, Teki, because they have a claim. If that happens, you go in. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter about anything else. If you can pull Hungary in, so much the better, but you go in. This entire time I've been trying to build up my fleet. I don't think it'll match the Ottomans. If I check, the Ottomans currently have four characters. Yeah, no, I don't think so. You, you can galley spam. Ooh, the Ottomans are preparing to attack Albania. Well, that sucks. That brings in Hungary and Venice. If we can pull the Austrians in, then I probably will declare war because they've got about 40,000 troops. The Ottomans right now have the same amount as the Austrians. That might also trigger the Mamluks coming. Yeah, if they attack Albania, I'm going in. They're getting ready to. Oh, I'm actually so hyped for this event, boys. It's so good. There it is. There's the war. You going to, you going to help? All right, sweet. It's one less person I have to bring in. Navally speaking, the Ottomans have kind of... Have they won that? I don't... Oh, they have. God, they just murdered the Venetian fleet. The Ottomans are kind of getting rolled here. I'm not going to lie. They're sort of making me a bit irrelevant. I don't see a better time than now. We're going to massively outnumber them. We're going to try and take back Adene. Tunis wouldn't even come in. I think, I think we do it. Uh, lads, uh, Scannerbeck, if you could come back here, that'd be great. No, thank you. Not once the Ottoman armies there. I mean, I suppose I'm in control of the siege now, but that was a bit dicey there. <laughs> here come the boys. Go on, Austria, get across the strait. Excellent. Now, boys, we're in control of the capital, which means we get to do this. The impalement of the Sultan, which is awesome. Roman III passed his survey of the battlefield to momentarily regard the burning city of Adirne with an unsettling dispassion. Oh man, the soldiers raised the beaten and broken body of Sultan Osman II from his slump position on the ground and prop him upright. The once majestic Sultan lets out a final chilling scream as the stake impales his heart and emerges out his back. Everyone likes us a lot more and we just straight up kill the Sultan, he's dead. And we get trust by the allies because we impaled the Sultan. Oh, they went to seize down Gazikamuk. God, that's a bit... Irritating for them. You're just chilling in the mountains of the of, the, of Caucasia and suddenly <laughs> the Lithuanians show up. Caraman, you're a little bit different. I want you as a vassal. <laughs> you won't give it to me? Well, you will at some point. I don't know, I've just seen an opportunity where Caraman has a bunch of cores here. And there goes the Caramanese troops. Now, will you give me... Yes, you will. Will you? Yep, yeah. yeah. Moldavian vassal. Excellent. Look, I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. This seems like an amazing opportunity to me. They've got no allies. <laughs> How could I resist? Come on. Like, honestly. <laughs> oh, you're disloyal now. I gave you all that stuff. I could pay off all your debt. Which got rid of 15. Liberty desire at the cost of 10 uh, ducats. So that's, I mean, that's a pretty good deal. Now just time to wait for the Venetians to peace out, I suppose. Well, the Albanians, I guess. Alright, I may or may not have headed upstairs and had a nap. So I'm sure that won't affect my performance. If anything, it'll make it better. I'm not really groggy and slightly disoriented right now. Who are we playing as? Oh, I just realized that the Golden Horde is dead. <laughs> They're just gone. They've been partitioned. They've been Polanded. Okay, right. I think it's worth doing something a little bit risky here. The Ottomans have no troops. I need, obviously, these provinces. And this is a way to fight Venice without anyone else getting involved. Okay, let's do it. Anyone want to come in? 
No? Okay. Okay, these numbers aren't stacking up nearly as favorably as I would have liked. All right, we're gonna get some war score because otherwise the second I peace out with the Ottomans, uh, the Hungarians will join against me, which we do not want. Now, boys, key thing if you're trying to siege down a mountain fort, take the provinces around it and stand on them because then they can't actually attack the mountains. They could just attack, you know, your troops that are in the mountains. I want to make sure we can cross the strait, so we need to take this. I'll give it to Byzantium, why not? Some money would be nice. And I think that's our war against the Ottomans complete. Doesn't that look good, eh? <laughs> I gotta think what I want from this war, to be honest. Because Venice is on medium. I probably want, I mean, realistically, I want these areas for the Byzantines. That's bad. That's really bad. Oh, why is she dead? Okay, so now I have to stay at war until this guy dies, because otherwise I go under a personal union. Oh, okay, we're good. We're good. Jesus Christ. I as much as I find this option hilarious, we definitely need this. Can we kill these Albanians? Don't, like, you know, take that one out of context, please. That would be bad. How fast is he? He's got three maneuver. All right, just please. Albania. I've chased these guys around the entirety of the Balkans. We're back here. Okay, we've got to be a bit smarter, apparently. All right, good. Our guy's dead. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my nation. I need to peace out. My nation is not doing well at all. Uh, we've now taken out 10 loans. I, I want to remind you that during the Ottoman War, we took out two. I don't have enough war school to do it against the Venetians on their own, and I don't really care about Albanian lands, so I guess I'll do this. Albania really got off scot-free there. Oh, I, I deleted the wrong army. I, did, I didn't delete the free company. I deleted just one of my regular armies. Brilliant. Well, that was smart. Oh, there's that piece done. It looks like they just took one province and paid a lot of money. That suits us brilliantly. As an idea, we have gone for uh, defensiveness because we already have that 10% uh, in our traditions and might as well stack that. Oh my God, our region even has plus 5% as well. So right now we're rocking plus what? 30% morale? Jesus Christ. Right boys, so when uh, you're in crippling debt, do you A, hunker down and rest or do you B, declare war on someone with a gold mine? And that's the Serbian army trapped. <laughs> there was no need. There was no need to march there, and yet, they did. I think I should still have enough war score to fully annex them. Yes. Coalition with these allies? I don't think so. Now, a neat little trick for resetting the truce timer uh, against the Ottomans is to declare war on Ragusa, because usually they're guaranteed by the Ottomans. So if I have to do this, the Ottomans sometimes come in. But the Ottomans are bankrupt, so they're not going to. <laughs> Understandable. Okay. Defensive no... <laughs> Yeah, no, so, sorry buddy. Enjoy that. I mean, that is a rare occurrence. All three allies wouldn't come in. I, it's not, that's just not happening. I'm not resisting that. <laughs> I really don't think it was the time to seek Ottoman protection, man. You're literally bigger than the Ottomans. That just makes my life a bit more inconvenient. Bohemia's going a bit, a bit mad. Uh, do I help the Austrians? Realistically, no, I don't need to. And now we try and fix our economy by printing money, also known as getting gold. And Castilla's now Smith's arrival, that is unfortunate. I will take that guy, I got him for a 50 tradition event, a 4-5. Okay. They chose to be a march, but they got a high liberty desire, there was no need. You could have just not done it. Well, this seems unfair. <laughs> How many favors do I have with you? 35? Oh god, I should really calm down a little bit. This could be a massive war, but I could take everything that I need. When's that truce done? 86. I think I'm gonna wait for that. End of the Peasants' War. Yes, your in times of instability are all finished, aren't they, Ottomans? No possible issues could be on the horizon. Coptic Zealots. If I don't touch that, Caraman will turn Coptic. That is way too funny to me. I No, we have to... I'm gonna let that happen. Well, there goes our entire navy. <laughs> Uh, no, no, leave them alone. Leave them alone. I don't want them killing the Coptics. I don't know where they're going, but as long as it's away from the Coptics, we're good. Coptic caravan, too good of a meme. Honestly, Ryzen, why are you even in this war? Oh, great, 21,000 troops. Okay, Austria is gone. Hey, Styria, hi, how are you? <laughs> You're new. I haven't seen Asteria in a game in years. That is, that's pretty cool. And we could also found Bucharest. I did take the icon of St. Michael, just, just to make sure we win these battles. A 455? Don't care if he's got a weak claim. I'm okay with that. But look, Caraman's doing the right thing if he wants to turn Coptic, which is just stay behind them. 
and siege down uh, the provinces. <laughs> so I like to think that they want to go Coptic. Oh, they're going to a new province. It pays off all of our loans. Nice. Crimea is preparing to attack the Ottomans. I wonder why. I think I'm going to declare war on Albania, which will bring in Venice so I can take Crete. I can co-belligerent Hungary and take Transylvania. And that should be fine. And obviously I'm fighting Albania so I can take Albania stuff. I think that's a good idea. All right, well, I've got the Venetians trapped on Venice, but that doesn't really help me. Oh, they're on low. Will they give me what I want? Oh, they'll give me Crete. It's very generous of them. I don't really think I want anything else, to be honest. I need it for my mission. There we go. Hey, Caramoid Coptic! <laughs> oh, it's good to see. Welcome to Christianity, buddy. And the Byzantines are now part of us, which is great to see. Look at that. Naples would peace out as well. I don't really want anything from Naples. Restoration of Union. Austria's trying to bring it back. They've actually... Huh, they've, they defeated Styria, which is interesting. Does that mean we can royal marry? Oh, we can. They're loyal. We've royal married Caraman. That's nice. Alright, well, we'll just take the East, because why not? Not much point taking more. Excellent. And against the Albanians, we will just full annex them. Brilliant! Which enables us to do a few things, ladies and gentlemen. We drive out the Turks. We become the heir of Rome. We conquer Transylvania. And we can even... Once I've called this place. <laughs> One sec. <laughs> One ducat in exchange for favours. Conquering the entirety of the Balkans is probably the most aesthetically pleasing part of the map. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we can form... Romania. It gives us immediately 5% discipline, which is pretty good. The rest of the stuff is okay. I mean, we can kind of stack Landleuda maneuver if I hire a general at some point. Ah, oh, six maneuver every time. <laughs> uh, we got some decent attrition. Like I said, it stacks really nicely with defensive side. It is both Moldavian and Romanian ideas. You get some decent stuff to do with manpower, and yeah, it's. It's just pretty cool. You know the drill. I'm gonna interrupt myself here to let you know that I'm streaming EU4 live right now. So once you finish liking the video, come say hi. I'm sure you can tell me all about the mistakes I made in this game. But ladies and gentlemen, that's where I think we'll leave it for today. I just thought I'd shed some light on a lesser known part of the map that has a load of flavor and some really cool missions. And the Impaled Assault mission, easily the coolest one in EU4. Slightly different style to usual. Let me know if you want me to show off more sort of uh, mission trees and cool nations to form and that sort of stuff, and I'm, I'll be sure to get on it. Otherwise, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Huge thank you to all our Patreons, in particular Henrique, JDOW52, and Cargon. Your support means a lot, guys. Whilst you're here, why not check out another video? It's, it's on screen now.